Algebra 2, Lesson 7-2, Properties of Exponential Functions. Personally, I think this is probably a misnomer. It's not really what we're learning how to do in this lesson. Mostly what we're learning to do is how to do a transformation of an exponential function. But I, I agree that that does take some understanding of some of the properties of those functions. So let's look at what we've got here. We have an exponential function, and you should be used to seeing this by now. We have y equals a times b to the x, and there's our variable. Um, and we've already discussed how b is our growth or decay factor, and we've also talked about how y, or how, I'm sorry, how a is our y-intercept. So if we are graphing this, which we're going to be doing again, transformations we graph, um, we are going to know that our graph will go through the y-axis y at a. And if it is a growth factor, it will go up as it goes. And if it's a decay factor, it will come down. Okay? Well, that's great, except that we also, well, we're going to find in this lesson that a, a, this a also is considered our stretch factor. It kind of tells us how fast our things are going. And if a is less than zero, or in the words negative, it causes a reflection over the x-axis. Okay? So that kind of brings into those transformations. Dilations are stretches. Are if a is greater than if a is greater than one, that means that things that is going to be stretched. And if a is less than one, it is compressed or kind of pushed, squashed. Um, so in a, when it's stretched, it, it happens much faster. It has a higher, it goes very fast. And when it's compressed, it kind of goes, it takes a little bit slower to do its growth or decay. That, that one's a decay. And this is its growth. It just kind of goes really slow. Slowly up, not so steep. Okay? Then with the reflection, when A is negative, That means it's going to look, it's going to come over the excesses. Here is a gro reflected growth curve. Remember, normally it goes up. Well, it's going to go reflect and go down. If I had a reflected decay curve, it would do the same thing the other way. And remember, with our curves, we are approaching the x-axis, this axis, asymptotically. Remember the word asymptotically means that we approach it, but we never reach it. Okay. So we've talked about dilations and reflections, but what about translations? Well, nothing we have so far can help us with a translation. So we need to add something, literally, to be able to do a translation. <clears throat> We're going to... Add a few things to our basic function. What we had before was more like our parent, and now we're looking at our width of translation. So now what I have is y equals a times b to the x. That so far looks normal. But that x has an h subtracted from it, and then I'm going to add a whole a k to the whole thing. Now, you should be familiar with this H and K idea because this is the same kind of translation type things that we have seen in the past with other functions. And if we have X minus H as an exponent, that's going to move the whole curve X units to the right, and it's going to go that way. If, X, if we have X plus H, it's going to move the whole curve. Here's an example of the curve. It's going to all move over here. It'll be over there. Now, so H is horizontal, and K is vertical. So if K is greater than zero, I'm going to move the curve up. And if K is less than zero, I move the curve down. And something to remember, that as I move the, the curve, I am also going to be moving the asymptote. There's that word asymptote again. So if I move up three units, then my asymptote moves up two and it approaches that. It doesn't ever come back down to zero. All right, 
So let's do some examples real quick. I have two examples for us. And both of them, you do the same way. Okay. Now we, what we have been doing is we have, have come up with a table of values and then graph that table of values. Well, we're going to do the same thing. However, first what we're going to do is we're going to find the parent function. And the parent parent function is just the function without anything added or subtracted from it. So in this case, the first one where we have y equals 3 to the x plus 2, we're going to just take the part that's being added off. And we're going to say the parent function is y equals 3 to the x. And we're going to do our table of values. So we, we have our table of values for x. And remember, you can try. You can do any x values, but the easiest ones are negative 1, 0, and 1. And 3 are probably enough. If you wanted to add negative 2 and 2 to get a really good table, that's fine. Right now, we're going to just do these three. So we put those in for x. and any. So we have 3 to the negative 1. Well, anything to the negative 1 means I just flip it, so that's going to be 1 over 3. Anything to the 0 is just 1, and 3 to the 1 is just 3. So here's my, and I'm now going to graph my parent function. So I am graphing. Once again, I'm still positive, so I'm going to keep that hanging in there. And I'm adding to, okay. So here we have negative 1 and positive 1, and, and there we go. Let's put a couple more points on here because I'm going up with this one. So I know negative 1 is 1 third. Here's 1 third about. 0 is 1. And 1 is 3. So here we go. Here's my parent curve. Now remember, I'm not really graphing my parent curve, so I'm kind of putting a dashed line in here. I also kind of have another point because I know that x equals 0 is an asymptote. So I know it sweeps around like that. Okay, so here are my three points. Now, if I'm going to translate this, remember, up, go back, going back to the original formula here, this is a k, which means I'm moving up two units. All right, so um, I was interrupted by a phone call, but um, here we are again, and I'm going to finish these examples up. What we've done so far, just to recap what we're doing and the little bug in the way, um, is that we have graphed the parent function. So from the parent function, we are now going to go back to the original function. And um, if you notice, this plus 2 is added to the whole expression, so that means that is a vertical um, but this is a vertical shift, and we are going to go up to two units. So I'm going to use another color, green here, and I'm going to take each of these and go up two. So here we had, this one's the easiest one. Here we move it up to there. Three, we move up to five. And this one third, we move it up to, there's one, two. Okay. And remember what I said is that you also move the asymptote. So my asymptote, which is was at the x-axis, kind of goes in here. So I know I approach this, but I do not reach it. So here we go. There is my growth curve shifted up too. And that's my actual curve for this function. Okay, so let's look at the other one. This time... We are going to do a reflection with the negative, and we are going to have a shift to the left. I have to make sure I've got my left and right straight. But we start the same way. We are going to first graph the parent and then do it. Now, you can either graph the reflection with the parent or you can graph it after. I kind of like graphing it with the parent. So my parent, and this is where... I want to put it, find the parent function in parentheses or in um, quotation marks because this isn't really a true parent. This is 
the parent that's easy to find parent. Okay, so I'm going to say the one that I'm looking at is y equals negative 2 to the x. And I want to remind you that this is a negative. It's kind of like taking it multiplying by negative 1. So I need to do the exponent and then take the negative of it. So we do our table of values, x and y. I've got negative 1, whoops, negative 1, 0, and 1. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half, or 1 over 2. And of course, there's a negative, so that makes it negative 1 half. Anything to the 0 is 1. And then we make it negative. And then 1, 2 to the 1 is just 2, and of course then we make it negative. Alright, graphing this. That way, okay. It's always a good idea to wait until you have come up with your numbers before you actually write your graph down, because I know I'm going to be moving this way, and I also know that all my numbers are negative, so it's important to put that there. Okay, so we have, here's negative 1, here's 1, 2, negative 2, negative 3. We'll need those. Okay, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay, so first one, negative 1, negative 1 half. Negative 1, negative 1 half. 0, negative 1. 0, negative 1, and 1, negative 2. So this, again, is a is the reflection of a growth curve. It goes kind of like that. Okay, and that's the parent. So once again, now I go and um, add the transformation. I'm adding 2, so all of my points come down to. So all I do is move this down to negative 3, I move this down to negative 2, and this down to negative 1. So here's my, my actual is here. So it's very important to do your transformation after you've done your parent curve. And that's all there is to this. I hope that you can do your translations and transformations, and I will see you in class.